So the question that you raise in today's society, no, it really wasn't a question. It was taken for granted that science led to technology, technology led to better standards of living. What you have today is after the post-war boom, which was, again, a period of rapid technological development, not as rapid as this earlier period, but almost as rapid. Very rapid increase in the standard of living. I mean, the rate of decline in the death rate peaked at the end of the 1960s. So the 60s really were the good old days. Um, so after that point, starting in the early 1970s, the oil crisis of 74 is a kind of good turning point. You have a extremely rapid change, negative change, in the rate of, ra of technological development. Tired of inflation, wars, and inequality caused by the energy crisis? LPP Fusion is developing a solution that could allow everyone to have cheap, clean, off-grid, and sustainable fusion energy. Invest now as we seek to bring this potentially life-changing technology to market. For more information, visit lppfusion.com. The underlying cause was that the post-war boom ended at the point where capitalism could no longer easily develop the world's productive resources at a profit. Now, this wasn't a final ending because the incorporation of the East Bloc, Soviet Union and China, into the capitalist system, starting in the late 90s, uh, and especially after the turn of the century with the integration of China into the World Trade Organization. This sort of gave them breathing room, and there was a little boost, uh, especially in the developing world in the first decade of the 20th century. But this slowing of technological development started to break the ideological, common sense idea that our survival was based on technology. And this directly fed into and was accelerated by the ideological notions in the big in cosmology. Because you look at, at the timeline of the development of Big Bang cosmology. And up until the 1960s, uh, the early 60s, first of all, almost nobody was discussing cosmology. It was really a very, very tiny field in science. Dozens of people. Uh, and second of all, it was pretty open. The Big Bang concept had been proposed in the 1920s by Abbe Georges Lemaitre. Not many people accepted it. And it had gone through a popularization after World War II by, uh, in the 1950s by George Gamma, who was a nuclear scientist who had worked on the Manhattan Project. And he drew the analogy, which was very ideologically, propagandistically effective, between an atomic explosion and the Big Bang. So he developed this theory that just like all these radioactive elements uh, existed and were discovered in Nevada after the first uh, Trinity test, all the elements that were made of were created by the Big Bang. Well, scientifically, this turned out to be totally invalid. But propagandistically, it was very valid especially because George Gamma was a terrific, one of our leading science popularizers. He was a great writer. Uh, in my uh, evolution of physics 
study group that we're, we're having, I actually use one of Gamow's books about the development of quantum mechanics. It's just excellent. It makes everything really clear uh, and historically valid. Uh, what's so that book with, called? What? What's Gamow's book called? Um, 30 Years That Shook Physics, I think it's called. Um, so, as a child, I remember reading Gamow's books, uh, One, Two, Three, Infinity, and, uh, all right, I forget the name of the other one. But they were very entertaining, and he certainly made the Big Bang very plausible. And little kids, especially little boys, love explosions. I mean, you know, what's better than that? Thank <laughs> you.